This video gives you a decent idea of what 10 pounds of fat loss looks like. Welcome to another episode of the Fat Loss Series. It's been a minute. As I haven't filmed in the last few weeks of this series, basically I'll go over in depth what I've been doing the last few weeks. The key thing I'd say for me is I've started to see a little bit of improvements in my physique. The scale weight starts to go down as well, but as I said, the visuals is what matters the most. It doesn't matter if the scale weight's going down lows, if the visuals are starting to look worse or just nothing at all. So be sure to be mindful of that. But anyways, what we're gonna do now is a quick little physique update and then we'll carry on with the rest of the so people. What I've been trying to do, as I mentioned, I think on and off for like the last how many months of this journey, trying to really bring up my lats. And the reason why you wanna do that is because then it makes your waist look smaller. So even though right now my waist isn't that small, I still carry a little bit of fat there. Trying to create bigger lats just makes the area look a lot wider. So for example, when you're like that or you're standing, it makes your waist have the illusion of small. Build a nice foundation of a back because that better aesthetic look. It gives you that kind of x ray so you have your, your back's coming in or ideally your legs start chunking out as well. So like that, it doesn't look, it makes your waist a lot smaller compared to the rest of your body. So that's the, not even a tip, that's common sense. Just try and build the areas that helps your physique look more aesthetically pleasing. So in this fitness game, it's all about manipulation of like various parts of your body to help get the best result. It's not just about slamming on the cardio to lose the fat. Sometimes just building muscle in certain areas makes the overall frame look way better than the fact that you don't even have to lose any more weight. What is good people? As you can see, we nine are starting to see the visuals get a little bit more sharper, you know what I mean? A little bit more, you know what I mean? It's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, in the background, I'm just gonna let it run this terrible leg day that happened about, I think it was last week, innit? Cause right now, I'm coming from a little bit of the future. But yeah, this session right here was a crazy day. It was back when the weather was like hitting mad high. I thought I was gonna die. I couldn't breathe, I was sweating buckets. It made the weights feel like it was 20 times heavier. But overall, I want to let you guys know why I've been kind of not uploading the series weekly. There was multiple reasons. At first, I felt like doing it every single week, I wasn't seeing enough changes week to week. So when I was doing the videos to you guys, I don't feel like you were seeing enough of a change. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to only film once every two weeks. So at least then you're seeing two week slots, which is, all, which is similar to what I say to people when taking progress photos. Do it once every two weeks because you might see a difference. Uh, but then I also just purely got busy. Like you're going to see soon on the channel why. But basically I need to make extra money so I need to focus on my coaching and my side hustles just so I could pay for certain things Because for those of you who don't know YouTube is not my main source of income This is more like a hobby I do to try and help people out um, So you actually really focus on that But anyways I'll leave you guys to the rest of the video Stay tuned to the end when we go over the actual review of the physique and how we're doing so far and what changes I've made Because I'm really happy with the results I've made We're 10 pounds down so feel free to stay tuned to see the physique that's 10 pounds lighter than the beginning All right, peeps, gonna get some chicken. I'm at Costco right now. Hopefully, I can save some money and get some stuff here. I'm switching out this. I'm gonna get the raw one. For the sake of like seven pounds, I will get the one that's raw and just cook it for the extra few minutes. The main thing I came for, people, was this chicken. I think the brand's called CP. It's normally a high protein breaded chicken. I think it's this. People just came back from Costco. I only got like three things to be honest. Chicken fillets, I'm gonna start eating them again just because they're high protein and they're much lower calorie than some of the foods I've been eating lately. So when you buy frozen chicken like this in a packet, number one thing you shouldn't do when you're buying bulk like this is put it all in the freezer because it becomes one huge block of ice and you're gonna find it so hard to defrost it. So what you need to do is separate them into like bags. So personally what I would do is weigh even size sandwich bag. Like for example, every time you take a bag out of the freezer, you know it's 500 grams for example. So at least it makes it much easier going forwards. So that's one thing I did. Also got some prawns as well because I love prawns. Typically I do prefer buying them when they're already cooked so they're pink. The only problem was is that with this particular brand at Costco, the difference in price was like £7.50 so it wasn't worth it. Now the main thing I went to Costco for, 
if you watch my channel well for a long time you would have seen this before on the channel great tasting foods basically this is chicken burger fillet so obviously something you like a lot of people eat normally at mcdonald's or kfc the only difference is it's a lot more higher protein because it's real actual chicken fillet so for that reason each one of these fillets is roughly around 200 calories 22 grams of protein and they are quite delicious All right, people, welcome. This is one of the finalish weeks because I'm into the 160s. Uh, woke up this morning, I think around 168 pounds. So we're slowly getting closer to the 166, the 167 area, which I like to kind of stay at. And then if I need to get leaner, I drop a little bit more. I think as you can see in the uh, physique update, the front is starting to look very sharp now, you know what I mean? It's just the back. The back is still the, the meaty areas I can just see, especially like the mid to lower and the love handle areas. That and my thighs are always my meaty areas, so that one you have to kind of keep pushing on it. Welcome people, it's been a minute since we've done this little review thing. So for those of you that stuck with this series, shouts out to you guys. Uh, but anyways, right now, this is technically week 10. And I think the last time we did a review was probably around week five-ish, I think. I know I was in the mid 170 pounds this area. Whereas thankfully over the last three weeks, especially I've dropped below the 170 and I've more or less consistently stayed below it, which is really good. So I've started to see much more improvements, especially on the front, as you've probably seen in today's video. So anyways, right now, what I'm gonna do is kind of roughly go over what I've been doing the last week, if you haven't seen me. And also I've still been doing my struggle points and my good points that I review week to week. But the main thing that's got me from, I'd say there to here right now, is the main changes I've done was, I had to be more mindful of the foods I was eating. The thing I did notice, my protein intake was lower than it should have been. It was still definitely high for like an average person, but for me it wasn't. I was hitting around the 130, 140, marker you know what I mean when I really should be hitting at least a good 40 or 30 grams at least higher than that so I had to address that so at first I started obviously making more foods and stuff like that so a lot more seafood a lot more cod however price increases have been quite a bit expensive as those of you probably watching have kind of noticed so I had to find other means so obviously I started including a little bit more protein shakes and protein smoothies you may have seen them in full day of eatings so as for a regular protein I've been having this which is the clear way in the Vimto flavor tastes pretty damn good and also also, the standard vanilla uh, whey protein that I have for my protein, that's why I put in my smoothies because I always use vanilla in my protein smoothies just because it's a nice neutral flavor that tastes fine, that blends with almost anything. So that was a quick way that I could bump my protein up on days when I feel like I wasn't going to hit at least the 170 marker. Then outside of that, in regards to cardio, for those of you wondering, I actually haven't been doing my treadmill in the house, which was one of my targets, I think, on week five that I wanted to make sure I started doing it. but. I just made sure to get my ass up and leave and, and walked around a lot more and actually kept my steps up active, you know what I mean? Apart from when the weather was poor, I did go on the treadmill then, but for the most part, I'd say 98% of the time, the weather's been pretty decent. So I've been purposely making sure to go on long walks. I've been going scenic routes, places. <clears throat> so my week to week cardio wasn't a lot. You know what I mean? There was the odd day when the weather was just beautiful and I just felt like getting a sweat on in the gym. I did like a little treadmill circuit. I'll go about that in more depth in another video, but it's basically you walk and then you jog, you walk and then you jog. Kind of like a mixed kind of motion of that. There's like really, there's really still only two ways I typically do my treadmill cardio, um, but I'll go about that in a separate video. But anyways, let's go over the struggle points and the good points I'd say that's come onto this week. Um, as for the struggling points, I injured my back on week nine doing a, such an idiot thing. It roughly ties into the last video I think you guys saw, which is about the, the one rep maxes causing people to like destroy their gains. Basically, I wasn't trying to do a one rep max, but I loaded up the bar to do uh, my barbell shrugs. However, I just miscalculated the amount of weight that was on the bar. And I started lifting, I went, oh, this feels heavier than normal. And I looked down, I was like, oh, that's why it's a little bit heavier. And what I should have done was reduce the weight straight away, knowing that this is a little bit heavier for me to do my four sets of this weight. But what I did was I carried on, and when I got to around rep nine, I just let go, I think a little bit too quick. And straight away, I felt like my, the right side of my back, like a spinal column must have dropped or something. It just felt like severe pain. And I've been dealing with that the last seven or eight days. I did book an emergency appointment with my chiropractor and he helped relieve it a little bit, but he didn't 100% fix it. There was two main areas, my right side of my back and my mid back. He fixed the mid back, but the right side, he said that's more muscle nut. And obviously he just needs to either wait till it kind of naturally releases with warm baths and just my massage gun and stuff like that. 
Um, by the way, if you need a massage gun, I, I can put a link in the description box to the company. They're, it's a really, really, really good gun. Uh, this isn't a promo, I just, I, this is just a really good gun. Um, so I've been using that virtually every twice a day at the moment, which is why it's just handy here. Um, just try and help my lower back, so I get my girlfriend just to, you know, jam me up with it. That along with warm baths, I've been trying to like, basically not aggravate my back. It mainly hurts literally when I do this. If I look down like this, I literally I just feel my back pain kick in. But luckily I've still been able to train as long as I train smartly. So I've been doing like chest supported rows and basically mainly machine based exercises. So in regards to the good points, um, I adjust, obviously a good point I count is me adjusting my workout routine to not strain my back. So I still stayed active because in many cases I do say if you're injured, don't go to the gym. However, I, in my circumstance, knew that, okay, the injury only occurs when I do certain motions. Like it's not when I'm walking, it's only when I literally look down. Uh, my step count, I've kept it up. 10K plus, as I mentioned, I increase my protein and reduce my calories slightly. I'm roughly intaking now around 21 to 2200 calories on average. But overall, the, the weight has gradually been dropping down. And I gotta say, I was worried the first five weeks when I wasn't dropping below 170. I didn't verbally say to you guys too much, but I did mention that the weight's going a little slower than it typically would be for me. And I wasn't sure why, man. I was getting worried. I was like, damn, has my metabolism slowed down? Has this happened? Has this I was thinking of almost any excuse at one point as to why the weight was taking long. But in reality, I am just happy that I stay consistent with it and it just started to happen. Literally in the last three weeks, I think I've dropped down in the last three weeks, probably about three or four pounds. And I, it just, it almost came like overnight. You know what I mean? I kept doing the right stuff and eventually it was like my body just hit a switch and it started to just trickle down again. Um, but overall, I've got to say, I'm happy. I'm still pushing forward. This isn't the end. This isn't the final episode. I'll still be pushing further. I think mid 160s is my kind of weight goal to aim for. And, and because I think then, I think my back will be a little bit leaner. Normally, to be honest, my back doesn't look leaner until I hit around 162 and below usually. You know what I mean? Um, which, even though it didn't sound like a lot, once you get to like fairly lean, to get even five pounds or six pounds leaner is a lot of effort. This one you have to cut, I'll have to actually definitely add in cardio and definitely be more on my diet as you get leaner. Whereas I think I can get to at least 166 pounds, look pretty lean, especially from the front and still be relatively more free. Whereas when I'm like the low 160s, I do need to definitely maintain my treadmill each day in the morning. Not long, but literally 20 minutes, which isn't long really, I could do, I could do that but I just haven't been, you know what I mean, if I'm being completely honest. But these, that's when discipline kicks in. Like my discipline right now, I'll probably say is like a 6.5 out of 10. If I want to maintain a one, 163, 162 pounds and below, my discipline has to be more like an eight. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm doing super excruciating workouts. It just means I need to be more on point across the board. You know what I mean? And that's how you see results. When you start seeing stalls, that's when your discipline has to upgrade a bit and you need to be more mindful of things overall, not just one area. You, you keep your eyes on all the stuff and you gradually try to level them up little by little. Anyways, people, as I said, the journey still continues, people. So stay tuned for one of the next episodes when we drop down and weigh a little bit further. But hopefully this video still gives you a decent idea of what 10 pounds of fat loss looks like. For those of you who don't know, I've done this kind of 10 pound weight loss as well at a higher weight as well. So for those of you watching, that maybe it'll be more the, the chubbier end or the end of a big bulk. I've got a video where I'm 184 pounds and I dropped down to 174 pounds. So it kind of shows you the kind of weight. I want to show you basically a physique like mine dropping weight at different stage and what it looks like, you know what I mean? Um, but anyways, people, stay tuned for the video. Hit the thumbs up and support your boy, man. YouTube hates me right now. And hopefully you guys will still support the channel. You know what I mean? A lot of you have been watching me for damn near years. But anyways, people, I'll see you in the next video.